So this information, I think, is, is the purest information you get on this subject and how to make it tomorrow. How do you know? This information obviously works, it works better and faster, has the longest track record, the most amount of history, but most importantly, the evidence is real, you can see it, it's not myth, it's not fantasy. So, who do you listen to? Talk about the teachability index, how teachable are you, what is your willingness to learn on a scale of 1 to 10, and what is your willingness to accept change? So anything on those two basic points? Question? Yes. Question was about other books written. And uh, question was specifically about some of the great books out there that give story that maybe the person who wrote the book isn't super wealthy. They don't claim to be, but they claim to be a teacher. And it is on those books Good, because those people maybe don't have the desire to become billionaires, therefore, if they don't have that desire, there's something wrong with that. But can't we listen to what you're saying because that information sounds really, really good? That's a very good question. Here's the answer. When you read books, and I'll, I'll give you one book, The Celestine Prophecy, and you read books like that, these books tell stories that never happen. Isn't that true? These books give you a myth. They are a book that is a fable. It is a story about a non-existent person in a non-existent place where non-existent things happen. These are not biographies. These are not autobiographies. These are made up stories. There's no secret that they're made up. The authors have some convoluted, whacked out theory of how success works, how the physical universe works, how Earth works, Good morning, all. Good morning. If you can hear me, let me have your yes, please. Good morning. Welcome to Plan Your Trade. Trade Your Plan with Great White for the 9th of April, 2019. If you can hear me, please, let me have your yes. Okay, let me. Okay. If you can hear me, please, let me have your yes. If you can hear me, please let me have your yes. If you can hear me, please let me have your yes, please. So that we can start off. Okay, let's start off. Well, as always first, I should start with this disclaimer so that you know what you're getting into. That out of the way, the next thing we're going to is our economic calendar for today. Today being Tuesday the 9th, calendar doesn't have much. But tomorrow is going to be heavy impact. Tomorrow is going to be heavy impact. Tomorrow we have so many things coming up at the same time. We have the British pound GDP. We have their manufacturing production. We have the Euro monetary policy statement coming in at 12.45 local time. Then we have their press conference at 1.30. And also by seven, we have FOMC minutes. So it's going to be one hell of a fireworks tomorrow going to be a heck of a firework tomorrow. So, since we know that, today might be a bit of less directional, more ranging. So you just need to be a bit, 
a bit, a tad careful in your trades today. So that aside, let's get into our trade view for today. So we we'll start off first as always with the dollar index. And looking at the dollar index, the dollar index is comfortably sitting inside an area of support. As you can see, it's still sitting in this area of support. It hasn't moved out of it significantly. Let's see how the daily candle close. The daily close of yesterday is looking bearish. It's looking bearish. The daily close of yesterday, as I said, this left head and right shoulder might still be in play. So, how do we play this out? It's very simple. We drop down to our four hour chart. So, what are we expecting here? Two things. If the dollar keeps ranging inside here, the euro USD would also have the same effect. So, if the dollar index should break above here towards this location, because you know this was previous support, let me change this. This was previous support. Now it's going to be resistance. Should the dollar index rally to test it, should this level hold as resistance, then we may see the dollar index drop back down to this area. Or lower, or should the dollar index break this level, retest? If this level acts as resistance, then it may go down. Or the dollar index might all of a sudden gain strength, break above this 97.22, retest it. If it finds support there, then it moves back high. Let me see. So you might expect something like this. So these are the possible outcomes on the dollar index so knowing that the next thing we go to this is just a likely outcome should the dollar weaken further it needs to break 96 97 to go lower but as long as it stays above 96 97 it has the potential to still move higher to maybe retest 97 to two area so that aside the next pair we're looking at is gold i'm looking at gold Gold, well, went as expected, but didn't come down to retest 1294.58 area. So let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. So what is gold doing now? This is a previous, a prior resistance area. As you can see, it's serving as support. So I'll change this to blue. So as long as gold, then this color of this, I'll change it to neutral. So, now the deal is it. As long as gold stays above this 1297, it still has the potential to run up towards either 1300 or 1303. But a move back below 1297 may see it try to test this area because this was prior resistance, which has been broken, it hasn't been tested. So should go come back to test this area and find support, and it may move higher. But a break below 1293.29, and the retest may send go back down. Or from this its current location, it may move high straight up. So these are the possible locations for gold. But for now, gold is sitting above a support at 1297. Next pair we'll be looking at is the USD CHF. Looking at the USD CHF, as you can see, price ran into this resistance and it has more like been ranging. It's basically not much of a trend on this USD CHF. Just basically not much of a trend. Let me see how it closed off on the daily. Well, the daily closed a bit bearish, so which means that there's a potential that it may drop further. There is a potential that price may drop. Exists a potential that given the close of yesterday's candle. So that aside, we move over to the Euro USD. I'm looking at the Euro USD as you can see. We have a very, very powerful bullish engulfing candle on the daily close. And this signals very, very, very strong warning to 
sellers. So as you can see now, there's a little, the dollar index is sitting at support. So it either needs to break that support or go above to retest the level or drop a bit lower. So how do we play this on the Euro USD in charge? So now the Euro USD is caught between two areas. This was the area we gave as resistance, price just sliced through it. Let me get rid of this level. So now what do we have now here? We have a bulk area of support in a way playing out. This place will now become support. The price has broken above it and is testing it. Let me get rid of this. Yep, I can get rid of this and replace it with this. So this is where we have price now. Price is just above this high and above a resistance area. So now this is the game plan. The last one hour candle is still in play. Current one hour candle. So price needs to clear this zoom, this area here. Price needs to clear. 1284 to 1272 12, to 1284. Once the Euro USD clears it to the upside and it retests itself as support, then the Euro is moving higher. But should it fail again, as you can see, there was a test of it yesterday and there was a bit of pullback. Should it fail at this level, should it run up here and get rejected, then it may come down to probably 1246. As long as it stays above 1246, it may still go. Higher, but a move back below 1246, and you may see price drop. So this, this is just what you need to know. This is resistant. As long as the Euro USD does not break above this resistance, it has the potential to drop lower. That's 1272 to 1284. But given, if you look at the daily close of yesterday, given the daily close of yesterday, it seems the buyers have come in. As you can see. These, um, sorry, as you can see, this morning star formation is still in play. So now this is a bullish engulf, and as you can see, it took out the range of these two candles. So there exists the potential that if they should pull back a bit, they might blast back up. So, like I always say, there are two ways to do this either you go to your Euro USD, you look for your Euro USD one hour chart. You look for your Euro USD one hour chart and just draw the fib as you can see on the daily candle, on only the daily candle of yesterday. You draw the fib from because this is an up move. You're looking for a, a possible area of correction. Should it start dropping, where will it most likely drop to? You have no idea. So you just drop down to your um, Chade chart. Place your fib here, and then you wait out on the one hour time frame. So you wait out on the one hour time frame. So if you wait out on your one hour time frame, your 38.2 comes at 1.1250. And if you observe that 38.2 is also within this area. So the 50% comes in at 1.1242. So if we go back to our chart. This is where we have our 38.2. 38.2 is just eight pips below this point. So you just need to be aware of that on this Euro USD. So this is the area of our 38.2. So price may just drop in here and move up. So for now, the best thing is just to wait and see. If you're going to go long, your long will be safe above 1284. But as long as it is below here, there is a tendency it may still go. Yeah. So the next one we're looking at is GBP USD. Look at the GBP USD from the daily point of view. Yesterday, candle seems to this support area is holding, as you can see. Price is moving away from it, given the close of yesterday. So we might see a move up on this pair. So what's the game plan for this pair? This place was resistance yesterday. As you can see, price had a tough time breaking above it, but there was something that kept that if you had observed, I would have told you that it might not. Price refused to drop lower. So today, we have a support here. We have a support here. And this area now between 
1374. So price may likely drop into this area. That's this zone. You may see something like this, and then you move higher towards this 3120. So as long as price stays above 30, 35, there exists a potential that it may still move higher. So that is it for the GBP USD. Next, we'll be looking at this Euro GBP. Looking at the Euro GBP, we'll be looking at is the Euro GBP. Looking at the Euro GBP from a daily point of view, it closed a bit bearish yesterday, but at this resistance area. At this resistance area, this previous high ran into it and dropped. And it has a long week to the top side. Although it broke this secondary trend line, but this, this trend line here, this trend line running from this point to this point, it ran into it and dropped a bit. So we may be seeing a bit of a drop on the Euro GBP. So knowing that we drop down into our intraday chart, our lower time frame chart, and uh, excuse me, let me draw this trend line. Let me try and draw this trend line. The reason why, because sometimes if I try to draw the trend lines, my chart may get so clustered. So I always have a daily time frame, and as you can see, let me get this well aligned. Price ran into this trend line, as you can see. So what is price doing now? Price is dipping into its prior support. It has found buyers there. So this is the storyline on this pair now. This is the storyline on this pair. Price has found dipped into this support area and it is moving away from there. Hey, hey, somebody says my chat is always clustered. It's not always clustered though. When you look at it from a daily point of view, it looks clustered. But if you drop to a lower time frame, like let me drop to one hour, Drop to a one hour chart, it's not so clustered. It's when you zoom out on it on a higher time frame, it looks clustered. But on the lower time frame, it's not. So if we look at this chart from the one hour chart, we can see price has dipped into this place. So this trend line, as long as price stays below this trend line, there exists the potential that price may still drop lower. So price may, may possibly run up into this area. And it, find, it should find sellers again, then it may pull down. But if it should run into this area and break above a retest, then it may move higher. But for now, it may, it, if you observe, it may be weakening as it has hit this trend line from the daily time frame. So that we just have to watch. So if you, are not, if you observe that, you know, that the Euro GBP most times has an effect on the GBP pet. So should the Euro GBP, let me get rid of this slide. So should the Euro GBP start to rally, what will happen to the GBP pairs is that the GBP pairs will start to go down. It will start to go down. So but as the GBP pairs are going down, you should be aware of where the Euro GBP is running into. So, if the Euro GBP runs into this area and starts to show weakness, then if it starts to drop, the GBP pairs might turn and start moving back up. So it may need to retest to confirm this area as resistance. As you can see, the first one, the second one, so it may try a third time. And if it fails, then it may come down and that will set up a very strong bullish move across the GBP pairs. So the next pair, but first you need to see it in action. 
you need to see it play out in action. The next player I'll be looking at is the GBPCHF. Looking at the GBPCHF, look at it from a daily point of view. Well, this was an indecision candle yesterday. Let's see what we can find out on the track day. So as you can see, the GBPCHF ran into a resistance area yesterday. Tried to break above, but now seems to be coming back below that zone, this that zone, as you can see. But if you observe, if you observe closely, if you observe this closely, you can see that this is a resistance. It may drop a bit, maybe towards this trend line. And if it drops towards this trend line and finds the right kind of evidence, bullish evidence, it may move back up. So that's what you need to be aware of on this pair. But now he's at a resistance and the support is holding. So we might say he's a bit of range. As long as you don't get a break above 1.3073, he may still come back to test this rising trend line here. Trend, this rising trend line on the four hour. The next pair we'll be looking at is the AUD USD. You know, the AUD USD, seems the AUD buyers, the AUD bulls have woken up. Price has broken above 71.31. So it has to stay above 71.31 to remain bullish. But for now, on the four hour, it has run into another resistance area at 71.47. So this is the game plan now. Price seems to have broken two trend lines. You can see this trend line, and it broke this secondary, and it has broken the primary. So this is the game plan now. So the analysis yesterday, the support of yesterday held, so price has already moved up. So if this area of resistance should hold, then price may drop down to retest this area. If price drops down to retest this area and finds this area as support, then you may see it move higher. Or it may break above straight up, retest the top side and move up. But know that a move, a close back below 71.25, a close back 71.25 on the four hour, we send price back down. So we need to be aware of that for the AUD USD. Next, we'll be looking at is USD JPY. And as you can see, USD JPY is gradually still moving away from that resistance area. We have now what appears to be a morning star formation on the daily, as you can see. Is a morning star formation on the daily, but my concern is this week's their support here. This week's to the low. So we drop down to our intraday chart and we'll look at it carefully. So as you can see, let me get rid of this trend line. As you can see on this pair, price is above that support area on the daily. So this is support triple one twenty six to triple one sixteen. This support plus line. If this area holds, there's a tendency that price will move back up towards this area. But now this pair seems to be a bit of range. Seems to be in a bit of range. So you just need to be aware of that. Next, we'll be looking at is the euro yen. Looking at the euro yen from the daily point of view, let's say this candle closed bullish and tried closing above 125.44. So what is the game plan on this pair now? You drop down to your four hour. You drop down to our four hour. Ah. I still seem to be some lots of structures for this one to go below. So 125.38 is giving support. But 125.47 to 125.72 is acting as resistance. So for this man to get a good sell, he needs to close back below 125.38. So you need to see something like this. You need to see a break, a retest, and a move lower. Or if the buyers, if there is enough buying pressure, let me get rid of this trend line, this trend line. If the buyers show enough pressure, you might see a move above, a retest, and a test of this major trend line here. So the next part we're looking at is the pound yen. Looking at the pound yen from the daily point of view, 
close, this looks like a bullish hammer. Looks like a bullish hammer. So I go down to my day chart. So if we look at it, it is ranging. It's still very, very much ranging. The resistance is coming in at 145.76. The support is coming in between 145.29 to 145.11. So this is just the range. This one seems to be ranging. The next part I'm looking at is the Euro AUD. And if you look at the Euro AUD from the daily point of view, sorry, it closed a bit bullish, but with the longer power, it probably got rejected from 11. Let me go down to the power. Got rejected from 11. It's like this is a level of yesterday that I pointed out. He broke above it, but came back below it, got rejected, and now it's coming down to. 157.56. So, should this area serve as resistance, as support, then we may see price move higher. I might need to readjust this trend line. Need to readjust this trend line to take into effect the recent event of things. Readjust this trend line. Okay. So, now, this is it as support back down. It's back down to support. The support comes in between first support, 157.63, second support, 157.18. So, these are the areas of support for now on this pair. The next pair we'll be looking at is the GBPA UG. Looking at the GBPA UG from a daily point of view, close bearish with the long upper week, but it's still above a support structure. Seems like it's above, about to break this trend line. So, if I go down to my power chart, as you can see, price is at support. There's a support zone between 1.8307 and 1.8283. So, as long as price stays above this area, there is a tendency that it may still move higher. It seems so the resistance is at 183.47, 46. 183.46. So for this pair, that just seems to be the storyline for now. Seems to be the storyline for now. These are the lower end of his support. Should he go below? Should this level hold? You may see price move back up. But should this level fail, wait for the retest and they move lower on this pair. That is the game plan for now. The next pair I'll be looking at is the USD card. Now, the USD card from the daily point of view is probably at a support here. Yes, it includes very bearish. But there's one thing I found out from experience. When you have a bearish candle into a support structure, most times the support structure will move, especially on a daily time frame. This is a daily time frame, and this is more like a demand area. So if we go down to our four hour chart, find out what we're looking at. Price is currently at that resistance here at that support structure. Let me get rid of this. Seems this trend line has been broken. Let me get rid of this trend line. Trend lines don't seem to be holding for now. It seems as if uh, the horizontal levels are holding. So prices are this support structure. Should this level fail as support, then you may see price drop, retest, and drop lower. But should this level hold that support, then you may see price move higher towards any of these previous zones of comment. Let me find out the areas. Let me get rid of this. Get rid of this. And also get rid of this. Get rid of this as well. So now, this is our first resistance. First resistance comes in at 1.3346. Should that level give way, then the next level of resistance, that is if the support should hold. Then these are the levels of resistance to the top. First resistance, 13343. Second, 13375. Third, 13398. That would only happen if this support between 1.3306 to 1.32. 95 holds. The next pair we'll be looking at is the GBP card. 
But the, 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 the GBP card still seems to be holding his support structure, as you can see. So there exists a potential that this man may move up from here. So, but there's something I would like to point out on oil. And as you know, oil is a major driver for the USD card. If you take the FIB, let me get this one. Price, shish. Sorry about that. Let me put this well. So we're looking at something here now. Price just recently broke the 61.8 of this move, 76.62 to almost 42.48. And there is a support. There's a previous support now resistance. Should this level hold is on a weekly time frame, as you can see. So what you'll be waiting for at this point is just to see a kind of a bearish evidence. Once you get the bearish evidence here, when that starts to play out, most often than not, the USD card will take off from this place. So that's it for today. I wish you all a beautiful trading day ahead and a blessed day ahead also. Thank you all for coming.